This over here is a brand new SSD from Lexa. This is called the NM790 and it advertises speeds of up to 7400 megabytes per second and it's got a very impressive price point meaning very low. Now how does this Lexa NM790 compare to the likes of Samsung 980 Pro that we have on the market that I would call pretty industry standard and named uh, brand SSD. Let's take a look. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10 but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So let's talk about some of the specs of this NVMe SSD then. First of all, one thing that you realize is that all the chips and controllers are on one side, the top part of the SSD, which means that this can easily be used in a laptop where SSDs that have something on the bottom don't fit. In terms of capacity, we have 512 gigabytes, one terabyte and two terabyte version. And on the side, you can see 980 Pro specs as well, respectively. The PCI generation is a Gen 4. In terms of DRAM cache, it doesn't have have a DRAM cache, but it uses a HMB host memory buffer 3.0 and SLC caching compared to the two gigabytes of DRAM cache on the Samsung 980 Pro. When looking at the terabytes written spec, things get very, very interesting because the one terabyte drive of this Lexa NM790 is rated at 1000 terabytes written, which is getting close to double the spec you get from the Samsung 980 Pro, which is only 600. And 600 is kind of what you see across the board with some of the, you know, top end or normal drives. If it's anything above 600, that's very, very good. If you don't know what terabyte written spec means, it means that basically you have a warranty period, right? That's rated either five year warranty, what you can see there, or the terabyte written spec, which everyone fills first or is reached first then your drive is you know out of the warranty for creators that is very very important because if you write very very large files very often every single day you might run out of your SSD faster than the five years which isn't good but this 1000 terabytes written spec is extremely extremely impressive you can write 547 gigabytes of files on this drive every single day for the next five years and it's still gonna be in warranty. That's the one terabyte drive. If you go over the two terabyte one, you can write even more. Unfortunately, we don't double the terabytes written spec when going from one terabyte to two terabyte, but still 1,500 terabytes written is pretty good. But from 512 to one terabyte, we do double from 500 to 1000 terabytes written. In terms of the read speeds, the NM790 is advertising 7400 megabytes per second read speeds up to, which is 400 more than what we see from Samsung. The write speed is also faster quite a bit compared to the Samsung 980 Pro. And when we're looking at the pricing, I highly recommend you check out the latest pricing in the description below if there's any deals or whatever on, you know, whenever you're watching this. But the price is 119 pounds here in the UK and 142 pounds for the Samsung drive for the two terabyte models. So the Lexa one, even at launch, is quite a bit cheaper than the Samsung 980 Pro, which makes it very, very appealing to a lot of people. But then let's have a look at some of the benchmarks to really see how these drives compare. First of all, looking at sequential read and write speeds from Crystal Diskmark, which really isn't a spec that you'd want to go for because in very small situations, you will find yourself limited to the sequential read and write speeds. More often, you're going to be limited to something else, somewhere else, some other connection that is lower but it's still interesting to check out in terms of read speeds i'm measuring 7082 megabytes per second on the lexer nm790 which is a little bit lower than what they advertise but it's still about five percent faster than the samsung 980 pro at only that's only 6752 megabytes per second in terms of sequential write speeds we're actually getting more than advertised spec and 6,652 megabytes per second, which is more than 25% faster than the Samsung 980 Pro. So things are looking very good for the Lexa NM790, but let's keep looking. 
Now, I finally figured out a very good a way to test storage options like NVMe drives to really see which ones are good for creators and which ones should you be getting because I'm often talking about the OS and programs drive, the project drive, the cache drive, the second project drive, archive drive. So which one of these drives is actually meant for what because you know as much as we'd like one drive to do everything there are certain drives that do well in one part and are meant really for certain things like an OS drive but then there's some drives that really like the big files and handle that well and are better for project drives and perhaps cache drives or something like that. First of all, let's have a look at PCMark 10 Quick System Benchmark. And that's a benchmark that tests lots of little file transfers and reads and writes. So if you're using documents or opening photos or something that you would do every single day, just reading and writing uh, lots of little files. So it's not as stressful for the drive, but basically measures the random read and write speeds uh, there, how good does the drive do, and therefore something that you'd be looking as a secondary drive that isn't as heavy on data, but perfect for a secondary drive. So here we can see that the Lexar NM790 is about four or 3.5% faster than the Samsung 980 Pro. Again, things are looking very good for the NM790. Next of all, the data drive benchmark from the PC Mark 10. So drives who do well on this test are good for storing a lot of data and I'm working with a bit larger, more intensive files. And here we can see that the Lexar NM790 isn't beating the Samsung 980 Pro and is about 9% slower. And here we can see, which I think is due to the DRAM of the Samsung 980 Pro, whereas the host memory buffer 3.0 isn't coming uh, in as well as the DRAM on the SSD drive. Moving on to PCMark 10 full system drive benchmark. And that's a benchmark that tests a lot of a bit more intensive things, but something when you're actually working on the drive. So that's programs and OS and drives that do well in this test uh, are meant for OS drives or where the programs are stored that constantly work actively on the drive. So it's more consistent work on the drive and then more demanding, especially creators who work with video and photo. And we can see here that the Lexar is actually about 11% faster than the Samsung 980 Pro, meaning that this is a great drive for a system drive or drive that you store your programs on or where you're actively working with the drive. And lastly, we're looking at the PCMark 10 drive consistency test which is extremely demanding task for the drive and we're writing over 23 terabytes of files on the drive plus we're filling the drive capacity over three times completely so this is really stress testing the drive at its absolute maximum and even though 99% people don't see that type of use in a normal workload there are some professional workloads that are very, very demanding for the SSD. And here we really see when the drives are absolutely benchmarked to the last, we'll see which one will do better. Now, often what I've seen on this benchmark is that the larger capacities and drives that have DRAM will do much better than drives with lower capacities and less DRAM. And here we see exactly that, where the Lexar NM790 is actually about 28% slower than the Samsung 980 Pro. And that is hugely because of the DRAM cache on the drive that can just handle the very demanding and consistent long reads and write speeds of the drive much better. So what's the conclusion then? Is the Alexa NM790 worth the buy and is it for creators? And I would say yes. So if you're doing things that are maybe less demanding in terms of file size, so whether we're talking about an OS drive or a cache drive with writes a lot of lo like smaller drives and you need access very fast and has um, maybe faster random read and write speeds in the um, slower parts, then this drive is perfect for that. So secondary drive in a, in a PC where you're not so actively working on those files or an OS drive, very appealing as well, or the cache drive, that's what I would use this drive for. What this drive isn't as good or as strong at doing 
is big, large and demanding tasks where we're working with very, very large uh, projects, for example. Let's say you've got a big video project that is maybe a terabyte and a half in size and you're working on this two terabyte drive, then perhaps that is not the best drive for that. But I would go with the Samsung 980 Pro instead. In overall, the Lexar NM790 is very impressive just because of the price point and what it offers. We get much faster speeds than the Samsung 980 Pro Pro in less demanding task where the file sizes aren't as big and a much cheaper option on the Lexar 790. The interesting thing is the terabytes written spec is much bigger than the Samsung as well. So if you're planning to use the drive longer than five years, you still know that actually the drive can last more than five years. So I'm impressed with this drive. Definitely worth checking out. If you want to check it out, I'm going to leave the links in the description below. I'll link it down there. Just to note that this drive is launching at different times in different parts of the world. So if you don't see the drive in stock right now, check it again in a few weeks time and then you might see it in stock there. I'll leave it linked below. If you do want to build yourself the best bang for buck creator PC, then there's build guides in the video description below. Whatever your budget are, there's video for you down there. Pick the one that's close to your budget and then I'll explain all the downgrades and upgrades in there. If you don't want to spend something on a PC that doesn't actually give you performance, but you want the best bang for buck performance, it's linked down there. Completely free, just go check it out. Bye bye.